Hey, you. Yes, you. Are you sick of those pesky individuals who keep taking advantage of first intention hand snipes and are just constantly annoying? Well, what about the intentions? Well, let's have a look at this. First, grab a weapon, my precious. No, not that. You are not going to be fighting any kind of skilled swordsman with that. Come on, get a proper weapon, not a woodcutting axe. Come on, let's do this. Hurry it up. Ah, yes. Much better. An arming sword. I'm so proud of you. Now, please demonstrate how to properly strike with the so Oh, brother. Not like that. Let's cover the basics. The very basics of striking is that you want the hard, sharp metal bit ahead of the squishy bit, also known as yourself. If we are going to refer to the words of one of Ito Sai's students, they said that Ito Sai believed that the weapon should lead first before the body. This way, it protects the body from most forms of counters, as you would imagine. The way you do this is you throw the point forward from the shoulder or the hip, depending on where the cut is coming from, and so this way it ensures that the sword leads before the body. Now we need a target. Yes, we do need a target, my little munchkin, if we're going to learn about first, second, third intentions and so on. Well, I suppose that will work. Now, intentions refer to your intention on hitting the opponent. So, if it is, yes, exactly, if it is the first intention, then that means that your first cut or thrust, you are planning on making contact with your opponent. So you see, my precious little minion? Yes, exactly. When you try and hit the opponent on the first movement, then that would make it the first intention. Now, this is where it becomes pretty self-explanatory. If your first movement is not intending on hitting the opponent, but your second one is exactly like that, that would make it the second intention. Yes, bravo. <laughs> oh, they grow up so fast. The easiest way to understand intentions, therefore, is whichever number of hit that you plan on landing on the opponent is the intention. If it's the second movement, it's the second intention. If it's the third movement, then it's the third intention. How is this relevant to hand snipers? Let me explain. When fencing a hand sniper, you will quite often find yourself in this situation. This is most taxing, and it happens far too often. And this doesn't necessarily happen because the hand sniper is a very good fencer. It simply is because of the fact that they rely on that first intention hand snipe. Therefore, what is the problem with relying on first intention hand snipes? Well, hand sniping itself is not actually a bad thing. It can actually be an effective technique. The problem is if you use it only and rely on it only as a first intention strike. This can become a problem when you're fighting against a fencer who is used to fighting past the first intention. They can gain your first intention and as soon as you deliver it, they know that you are committed they are not, they're able to direct their strike more effectively, and you end up being gamed in your own game. Therefore, what is probably one of the most, not the only, but one of the most effective ways of dealing with a first intention hand sniper? Well, simply aim to go past the first intention. If you both go for a first intention and both intend on landing that first hit, it is very likely going to end in a double. Instead, work that first intention against them. When they go for that first intention, they are committed. If you do not go for the first intention, you are not committed, and therefore it is a lot harder for your opponent to dictate exactly where your weapon is going to go. So therefore, game it, work past that first intention, dominate that center line, and expect that first intention strike, for then you can then capitalize upon it.